Good afternoon and welcome to the May 26th edition of The Pulse. I'm Brianna Wallen. And I'm Connor Reganis. This week on The Pulse, we spotlight one event that brought our entire community together, as well as highlighted our production seniors and their amazing accomplishments within our program. We have all that and more on this week's edition of The, the Pulse. Pulse. Spring is a great time to reflect on the classes you take in this year. Thank you to the teachers who instruct them. Madeline Spina visits one science class with a teacher that is passionate about all things, all things physics. The reason why they don't move is because these electrons we For most students, physics can be a difficult and daunting class. With teacher Mr. Lerscher, however, the course can easily become a breeze. Needing extra help, I feel like it would probably be tough to juggle all these kids, but I do enjoy his teaching, so I think that it's pretty cool that a lot of my other friends get to learn from him as well, so we can all get help in the same way. From honors to AP, Mr. Lesher devotes his time to educating his students on the fundamentals of science. He isn't only a phenomenal educator, however, but he's the only physics teacher in the building. It's about that resilience and being able to, to believe in yourself and, and work something through to the end, and that's that's life. Yeah. 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 With Lesher so, being the only person teaching physics, the way he structures like the class is extremely time. important to the content. So like, yes, for that. students like Logan Tomek, his style of teaching makes the class a perfect place to learn. Just kind of in one specific way instead of having Inverse so many interpretations so, that it gets hard for people happens, to understand what each, other, each class is actually learning. Students often find that with Mr. Lesher's help, physics can be applied both in and out of the classroom, allowing them to understand how important the subject really is. Physics helped me a little bit in AP Calc this year uh, with the velocity questions, so I already had a bit of understanding. So. For high school principals, finding a certified physics teacher is like finding a four-leaf clover. And just like four-leaf clovers bring you luck, we are very lucky to have Mr. Lesher here at MHS. From The Pulse, this is Ben, Madeline Spina reporting. Graduation season hits our program hard each and every year as we must say goodbye to many valuable members. We'd like to take this time to acknowledge all that our seniors have done for The Pulse. As the year comes to an end, we would like to take time in our final production to thank all the seniors who contributed to this year's Period 7 Broadcast Journalism class. Brianna Wallen has showcased her natural camera talent while anchoring and reporting for many stories. In addition, her friendly personality brightened up our class. Even though Brianna was new to the class this year, she will be greatly missed by all next year. Brianna is going to continue to pursue journalism at Southern Connecticut State University in the fall. From the Pulse, this has been Brianna Wallen reporting. Connor Ruganis participated in broadcast journalism for one year and was able to leave a big impact on our program. He was always open to help other groups when needed, and his dedication will be greatly missed in our program. Connor will be attending the University of South Carolina to study nursing. From the Pulse, this has been Connor Gannis reporting. Tommy Rogers, who is an important member of our Pulse and will be greatly missed in our program. Without being on camera, Tommy's editing, script writing, and filming talents were essential to our productions. In the fall, Tommy will be studying engineering and technology at Temple University. From the Pulse, this has been Tommy Rogers reporting. Jack Stokes has been a vital one-year member to the Pulse, bringing his big smile and humor to the camera in the class each day. He has shown his dedication to the program in every story he has completed with his editing and reporting skills. Next year, Jack is going to attend UConn to study finance. From the Pulse, this has been Jack Stokes reporting. Thank you to all the seniors who have dedicated their time to make the Pulse program what it is. The production will not be the same without you. As the school year comes to a close, spring sports must follow. Jack Stokes takes us down to Manchester Country Club to play around with this year's girls golf captains.
What's up MHS, I'm Jack, and today we're gonna go hit the links with some members of the girls golf team and go play some holes with them. Hopefully we'll have a fun time because it's a beautiful day out here. How does it make you feel that the team is very successful during your senior season? It makes me really proud of them because we always, we haven't always had the most players. So some times have been a struggle, but we're number 15 right now. So we're doing good. And it's just really nice to see them all do good and be their best. Very nice. Favorite part of the golf team, I think, would just be our team atmosphere. Everyone, we always have a good time, and I enjoy like hanging out with my teammates. And I think I also enjoy just the fact that I can always improve each day. So tell me, why is golf important to you? I've been doing it for a few years, so it's always just been something that was a hobby of mine and it's really fun, so I just love it. So Juliana, if you face the guys team today, do you think that you could beat us head to head? Well Jack, based on how you played today, I think that the girls team would beat the boys team any day. Oh, that one hurt. <laughs> Thank you to Juliana and Alyssa for giving us some great answers. We had a great time out there and it was awesome to get the inside scoop on the girls golf team. For the last time, this has been Jack Stokes reporting. Once again, thanks to the girls golf team for helping Jack straighten out his golf game. And we wish the seniors the best of luck in the end of their golf high school career. Sports aren't the only extracurricular activities our students are drawn to during the spring. This season, the stage opens up once more. Erica Rosette takes us to the auditorium to spotlight how actors are performing in a unique way. Manchester High School is known for its great theater performances, most recently with this year's Radium Girls and Footloose. However, there's yet another production that the Sock and Buskin Drama Club has done each year called One Act that hit the stage on May 24th in Bailey Auditorium. So during the one acts, students get the unique opportunity to really choose what they want to showcase uh, during the final performance. So this year we have some students student directing, we have some students actually music directing our ensemble number, um, and students have the opportunity to either sing, um, do a monologue, do a scene. Um, there's some choreography that's incredibly fun this year. Um, it's really almost a variety-esque performance. One acts are an opportunity for students to showcase their singing or acting talents within one scene or song. Passionate theater students like sophomore Trisha Kearney collaborate within a short month-long period of weekly rehearsals. I wanted to get to know the people that I worked with in the musical for and I just wanted to further improve my musical skills. They eventually performed their scenes in Bailey Auditorium, but remade into a black box theater. This year's ensemble number is being led by student directors, junior Owen Austin and sophomore Jordan Carter. I'm directing just because I think it's going to give me like a unique like experience to like get in my director's shoes and appreciate them more because um, theater is what I do. So just being able to like sympathize with them and I think help me grow as an actor and performer. Compared to One Act's last year, more students are directing scenes this year, creating choreography and blocking for their given scenes. I'm directing the scene Seasons of Love with Owen Austin, and I really like directing because I feel like it gives a different perspective on performing as a whole. One Acts are a great opportunity for MHS's performing arts students. Congrats to the students who performed in this year's One Acts on May 24th, and thank you to the directors for allowing students to take the stage in a whole new way. From The Pulse, this has been Erica Rosa reporting. It is clear our students are extremely talented, and we wish our Drama Club students the best of luck in their upcoming performances next fall. With graduation being less than a month away, what's a better way to see how our students have learned this year than a game of trivia? Kaylee Cormier hits the halls to test the knowledge of both students and staff alike to see how much they know. Hi Manchester, this is Kaylee and today I'm going around MHS to ask people trivia questions. Let's go. In football, how many points is a touchdown? Six points. 
Good job. Seven. Or six. Mm. Six. Six. <laughs> six. 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 Oh. Six. Six. Four. Five. Seven. Can I get a pass? Like. How many legs does a lobster have? Two, six, or ten? Six. Wrong. Maybe six. Five. I'm gonna say six. Ten. Yeah, that's right. Ten. Ten. Wait, legs? They don't have legs. <laughs> Do they? How many ears does an octopus have? One. Um, zero because they're in the water. <laughs> Eight. Seven. Six. Two. Eight. 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 Four. Three. Yeah, good job. Three. If there are 60 seconds in one minute, how many seconds are there in five? It's like 30... 30,000? <laughs> no, 3,000? 540. <laughs> 3,500? 300. Two, no, 300. 300. What artist's real name is Peter Hernandez? Give it a buck, I don't know. Post below. The baby. Kanye. No, wait. <laughs> it's Kanye? I don't know, she whispered and said Kanye. <laughs> Bruno, Ma Bruno Mars? Yeah! Well, I have a question for you. How many hours is 30,000 seconds? Eight hours. From the Pulse, this is Ben, Kaylee Cormier reporting. Clearly, our students know a lot. While trivia has been a fun game that can bring our student body together, important events can as well. Isabella Lagos brings it to the MHS cafeteria to see how one organization in the school is celebrating our town's diversity in a fun and inclusive way. The second annual Multicultural Night held in the Manchester High School cafeteria showed students and community members the different cultures of Manchester High School. Like not many people know that there are like a, a bunch of cultures that are just not shown and hopefully by Multicultural Night they know a little bit more about each and every culture that there are in every continent. SEAT, the Student Equity Advisory Team, put on this event. The president, Michaela Enswa, tells us what being a member entails and seat goals in MHS. She has a like responsibility to make sure that people are really sensitive to um, other people's backgrounds, like their families, and being um, respectable and respectful of where they come from. So I think um, being a part of SEA has really taught me to like hold myself and others accountable when it comes to being like sensitive to where other people come from. Food from all over the world, as well as a performance from the dance team, is how these cultures were represented. Not only did this night teach them about culture, it also brought students together in a space where any student could show where they are from. Students like the members of SEAT, putting on events like Multicultural Night, help us see the different representations of our school. From the Pulse, this has been Isabella Lagos reporting. Thank you to our Student Equity Advisory Team for hosting this spectacular night. From our cafeteria to stands around town, food can be a wonderful way to bring people together. Ryan Silverberg eats at one popular pop-up on Main Street to see why its chef is driven to cook each and every day. Hey MHS, today I have the chance to speak to a local Manchester hero, Bobby T. Let's get started. Um. I was born and raised in Hartford, lived in Hartford till I was five, and like from three years old to five years old, my grandmother used to bring me to the Good Shepherd Church, and it was a grass hill like this, and we used to play on the grass until a little old man with a wagon selling hot dogs came, and he used to get a hot dog, 25 cents. And on my grandmother's deathbed in 1985, she whispered to me that I should open a hot dog stand. So the following spring I did. Started out with a hot dog, $1.25, and was making a profit, even back then. And what makes this location a good location for you? Uh, a lot of the downtown traffic, people passing through, going to the hardware store, or, you know, businesses, and uh, going to like Glastonbury and stuff, going down the main road. Um, but usually they come from, I mean, I get people that come here from Vernon, Ellington, Southington, 
end field that'll get in the car, drive all the way down here to get a hot dog. And what's your favorite part about running this business? Talking to people. Talking to people. Talking to the people is great. I'm, I'm a talker, so, uh, but uh, I love it. I love it. Big thank you to Bobby T for his time here today. We wish him the best of luck in the future of his business. From the Pulse, this has been Ryan Silverberg reporting. Thank you to Bobby T for sharing his heartwarming story and spreading love throughout the community. Well, Manchester, those are all the stories we have for you this week. Make sure to follow our Instagram, MHS underscore television. Check out our website, mhstelevision.com, and email Mr. Larson at b11elars at mpspride.org with any story ideas. I'm Brianna Wallen. And I'm Connor Gannis. And this has been The, the Pulse. Pulse.